Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to Wednesday's Dr. Nancy Live. Um, don't forget today's administrative professionals today. I'm gonna to take the girls out after our Facebook Live today um, to take them to lunch, but I totally forgot about it until I went to Kroger this morning to get a Starbucks. So, and I saw all these flowers. I was like, oh no. So don't forget, um, I love my staff. I have great staff, um, both locations. Um, so if you have administrative help, you know, wish them well today. So today we have a special guest, um, Heidi Straub. Um, Heidi is a holistic health coach and she's got um, some really interesting things to talk about with us today. Um, but I wanna go ahead and welcome her and um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, thank you for having me. I am, as you said, a holistic health coach and in that arena, I primarily focus on the mind-body connection but I also do work under the title of advanced digestive health practitioner. And in that arena, what I do is help people learn how to talk to their bodies. So oh. what I have learned is that our bodies are always talking to us. We just don't necessarily speak the language. And when you can start to uh, interpret, as you know, right, with the work that you do, when you start to interpret the messages the body's sending you, then you can give it what it's asking for and what it needs and symptoms just go away. Right. So how did you get into this? Um, actually, it was through um, a, a common connection. I learned about this from someone who does thermography. So I am a believer in trying to get as much information as possible, as early as possible, and to be proactive in my health. Okay. And so, you know, thermography for people who understand, this is a leading indicator. Mammography is a lagging indicator. If you do thermography and you see what's going on inside the body, before you get to the point of a disease or diagnosis, you can take, you can make lifestyle interventions that will prevent you from ever having something progress to the point where it would show up in a mammogram. And that's what we can do in the digestive health arena too. Great. So let's dive into the digestive health. What does that mean? <laughs> okay. So, well, first of all, there's three things I want people to walk away with in terms of takeaways. Number one is we've all heard the saying, you are what you eat, correct? Yes. The yes. truth is you are what you digest. Because if you're not digesting it, you can't absorb it. And so it's, it's more than just you are what you eat. It's we are what we digest. The second thing I want people to take away is, again, something you know well. Just because something is common doesn't mean it's normal for the body, mm -hmm. right? Right. You've probably had people who've come to see you for persistent chronic constipation and their doctors have said, that's just your normal. You're not going to have a bowel movement, but once or twice a week, that is not normal. Right. right. Um, and the third takeaway then is what works for the men in our lives isn't necessarily going to work for us. And women are I found that. And I found that needs, very interesting. Yes. And yeah. the needs of women are different. And I keep having to reiterate this to my husband, right? Is, you know, what the diet that's working for you, the approach that's working for you, isn't necessarily going to work for me. Um, having a little hard time, harder time getting that to sink into him than it did to me. So those are, the, oh, yeah. those are the three key things I want to reiterate to people throughout the presentation. When we're talking about digestion, what we're talking about is your ability to literally break down the things that you're eating into the substances that are usable to the organs of your body. Right. So they absorb through the intestines and give us our fuel that we need. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, that begins with chewing, mm. right? The digestion right. piece really begins in the mouth. Yes. We all heard our mom say you should chew, what, 32 times or something? Right. Well, at least back in my day. <laughs> right. And most people, women included, especially moms who are trying to manage a bunch of things and, and little ones that don't sit still at the table for very long, right? They're not chewing their food. Mom isn't eating mindfully. Mom isn't chewing her food thoroughly. And so you're really putting the rest of the digestive system at a disadvantage. So step number one, chew your food. Step number one is chew your food. That's okay. right. Okay. Right? And then chew to what? So it's like a liquid consistency? You know, I, uh, it's a joke that I chew my food for so long. Even I can't get it to the point where the consistency of cake batter, which is what good would look like, but yeah. it's really tough. But it's definitely yeah. more than I chew it a few times and I think I can get it down without gagging on it. So I'm going to go ahead and swallow it. Yeah. Awesome. Then what's next? <laughs> so the, um, we are what we digest, but of course that involves eating. So I want to start by talking a little bit about macronutrients because everybody hears all this stuff out there about micronutrients, right? 
what I want to make sure we're all starting out with a common um, playing field is what are these macronutrients? Because everything that we're eating is going to break down into either carbohydrates, protein, or fat. That's it. Okay. It's either carbs, protein, or fat. The sad reality is almost everything that's out there that's a convenience food is a carb. Carb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, all the grab and go stuff, it's carbs. All it is. That, the comfort foods, they're carbs. Right. So um, the reality is you're seeing a lot of patients in your office. I see a lot of people who are over consuming carbohydrates. And when mm -hmm. you experience symptoms mm -hmm. like um, nausea, morning sickness, those things are often rooted in overconsumption of carbohydrates. That kidney stress, that morning sickness, nausea, whether it's in the morning or all day long for pregnant women, that's actually a sign the kidneys need extra support. So one of the things that's often overlooked is not only what you're eating, but what are you drinking? And people are drinking mm -hmm. a lot of sugar, they're drinking a lot of carbs, and they're drinking a lot of chemicals in the things that they're drinking, right? So look at not only what you're eating, but what you're drinking. Start to be very mindful of that breakdown between carbohydrates, protein, and fat, and then begin to tune in to some of the signals that our body is giving us, like IT band stress, Okay, that is, again, another sign of you're consuming more carbohydrates than your body has the ability to produce the enzymes necessary to digest it. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about carbs. Carbs come in two buckets. You've got complex carbs and you've got simple carbs. The complex carbs are your fruits and vegetables, the fiber containing things. And then the simple carbs are your sodas, your soft drinks, your juices. You know, you don't have the fiber in them anymore. Now it's a juice. That's a simple carb. You have your breads, pastas, cookies, cakes, crackers, those types of things. Um, and alcohol. Mm. Mm, yeah. So people uh, always, well, am I going to have to give up my alcohol? I'm like, you're going to have to include it in your carb count and you're going to have to make some trade-offs, right? Yeah. Um, protein is one that we're going to spend a little bit more time on because protein is so key. And that's one of the differentiating factors between men and women. So protein, you've got your animal protein products, but you've also got your nuts and seeds. And then you have um, things like quinoa that is a source of protein. But if you go read your quinoa label, you might be surprised at how many carbs you're getting in there too. So again, you have to look at that ratio. And then the last one is fats. And oftentimes you're going to find your protein and your fats are packaged together, whether that's some type of an animal protein or it is the nuts and seeds. You're going to have um, protein and fat packaged together, but then we have um, other fats like coconut oil and things like that that, um, that are extra sources of fats. Okay, so let's go back to protein for just a second, because the interesting thing that I have learned is that the vast majority of women are walking around protein deficient at the cellular level in their body. Okay, I they, believe that. And, and what's interesting is I'm going to recommend a book here. It's not written by me, but a book I'm hoping everyone will be prompted to read and learn more about is called The Enzyme Advantage for Women by Dr. Howard Loomis. And I'm going to give you the uh, Cliff Notes version of this book, but it is worth reading because I guarantee you, you are going to see yourself and so many of your loved ones in this book when you read it. Light bulbs are going to go off. You're going to underline, highlight, write people's names in here. Um, it's fantastic. The key issue is that when we start menstruating, women, when we start menstruating, we have a monthly demand for protein that our male counterparts don't have. Okay, so protein is key for growth and repair. We're using a lot of the protein substances in our body to grow that uterine lining. And then when it's no longer needed, we don't reabsorb it for other purposes. It's shed from the body. So we have a monthly demand for protein and a monthly loss of protein that our male counterparts don't have. And therein starts the slippery slope of heading down protein deficiency. Now, one of the primary ways women will recognize this is you lose your interest in eating protein because mm. you just don't feel good when you eat it. And the body has an amazing ability to have us eventually not want to eat what we can't digest. So if you've lost your taste for protein, chances are you're protein deficient. Um, another thing I'm sure you see a lot is women who are coming in with very cold hands and feet. That's another yeah. sign of protein deficiency. And then one I know you have to be seeing a lot is constipation. Yes. Because that constipation is an indication of undigested protein. So 
Um, certainly there's the structural component to it that helps with that. And that's always my number one thing in terms of the go-to for people who have kids with um, constipation problems is start by clearing the structure, get them in to see their chiropractor, mm -hmm. but also work on digestion. Right. Okay. So um, the, the third or the, the, the one other thing I want to talk about with respect to protein before we go on is um, a lot of times another symptom that pregnant women um, will get is uh, heartburn, right? Mm -hmm. And when you get that heartburn, they want to put you on some kind of an acid blocking drug, right? They may tell you to take Tums. They may tell you to drink baking soda water. They may put you on either an over-counter or prescription drug for blocking stomach acid. But if you do that, you're turning off your ability to digest protein because you need that stomach to become acidic to kickstart the protein digestion process. So you can see if you're already likely to be protein deficient and then you start to experience heartburn and the solution that you're given is to do something that's going to inhibit the body's ability to create hydrochloric acid, you are accelerating that rate of protein deficiency in the body. I bet people didn't know that. I, I know I didn't know yeah. that, right? I still remember calling into my OBGYN when I was 11 weeks pregnant with one of my two kids and saying, I've got this really bad heartburn, which I'd never had before. And they, their answer to me was just eat white foods, eat things that are more bland. And I described to the lady what I was eating. And I said, I don't think I can get any more white than this. You know, I mean, it was so bland and I still had that indigestion. And yes, of course, the answers that I got back were some of the things that I just shared with you. Nobody told me, you know, what I needed to be doing to actually digest my food. So I didn't have that heartburn. Okay. Crazy. So an another women's health issue that I want to make sure that we talk about, uh, is related to fats. Okay. When you think of fats, I want you to think of all of the hormones. So think about um, women who have inability to conceive, inability to carry a pregnancy to term, um, inability to initiate labor on their own, the ones who have to be induced. And then again, after you've delivered, um, inability to act adequately lactate, all those things are fats issues. So think fats, fats, fats. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're going into a pregnancy protein deficient, you're, we talked about protein being growth and repair, right? You're growing a baby. Right. Your yeah. baby needs protein. You need protein. Um, so the time to start on all of these things is today. Right. So let's talk about people are vegetarians. Yeah, it's much, a lot. It, it, it can be done but it is much more difficult to do. And the key thing I suggest to people who don't want to eat animal products is make sure you're, you're looking at those ingredient labels and you're not just looking at the protein count, but you're looking at protein relative to carbs. Because you can pick up protein bars. You could go to the grocery store right now and you walk down the aisle of protein bars or protein powders and you start turning over those labels. And you will see sometimes, you know, you'll have seven grams of protein, but 21 or more grams of carbs. So are you really getting a protein bar or are you getting a carbohydrate bar that has some protein added into it? So yeah. it can be done. And there are some forms of protein that have a lower carbohydrate um, balance to it. That's what you want to look for. Great. And of course, I don't have time to go into all of this because this is a short call, but um, <laughs> But it's really whetting people's appetite to start to learn more and then to become, once again, an avid label reader. It's interesting that I know people don't think of those things, um, especially like the heartburn. They think, oh, it's the um, red sauce I had or, you know, or it's just the pregnancy or the baby's just pushing up on me. But I don't think people think of, you know, protein deficiency as a symptom of that. Right. Or, Yeah. That's interesting. It, it, that it's a digestive issue, right? Right, it's exactly. It's just a space issue or it's just this one food. But right. it's really, and it's really our body talking to us, right? That's, right. What, we, that's what we want to get across. I mean, you think about this. It's intuitive, intuitive to most people that when you have a tension headache, you rub right here, right? Right. right? right. This is the point where these muscles will have involuntary muscle contraction if your body is deficient in lipase. That's telling you, hey, there's a strong chance you're having trouble 
um, digesting fats. So we rub there intuitively, not knowing that we have a communication going on with our body telling us, send us lipase, right? We're not acetaminophen deficient. We're not ibuprofen deficient. We're not all of those other things. We are deficient in lipase. So when you learn that language and you can begin to give the body what it needs, the involuntary muscle contraction goes away. And it's amazing. That is awesome. We do have a question um, on the labels. Should proteins um, be higher than carbs? If you can find it. <laughs> and I, I'm going to be honest hard. with you, it's not easy, but yes, if you can find it. And then again, you want to look in totality. There is a free app that you can get and you can download it to your phone. It's called um, My Fitness Pal. And there are a couple of other ones as well. You can scan labels, you enter in what you're, what you're eating, and you want to look at a pie chart where it's going to show you visually carbs versus proteins versus fat intake over the course of a day. And it's mind blowing. Honestly, if you start doing this without changing your habits and you truly do what you've been doing, it is a staggering amount of carbohydrates that we're eating. It really is. And, and um, most people that have seen me recently, I've recently lost like 40 pounds. And the way I did it was balancing my protein, carbs, and fats. So, um, and then eating consistently throughout the day. So it made a big difference in my health just paying attention to that. And now I read carbs and you're right. I looked at some of the bars, you know, cause you think, Oh, a protein bar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you look at the carbs, they're ridiculous. Yeah. So and yeah. the same thing is true of protein powders, right? Yeah. And let's take protein powders for just a second. You start out with something that has more carbs than protein. Let's say you're going to put it in almond milk or some other type of um, plant-based milk. That's more carbs. Now you're going to throw some fruit in there to flavor it. That's more mm -hmm. carbs. If you're throwing in kale or spinach, that's more carbs. Right. And it's not that any of those things we just mentioned are unhealthy for us. Right. But it really starts to add up. You think you're starting your day with a protein shake. Yeah. <laughs> You've started your day with a carbohydrate shake, right? Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Well, before we leave today, do you have any, anything you want to leave with anybody that we didn't go over? I do. There's one other book I want to recommend and then a class if okay. anybody wants to learn more. So the second okay. book is the first book that I mentioned, um, The Enzyme Advantage for Women is really the one that lays the foundation and the groundwork, right? It's going to help you understand uh, more about everything that I've talked about. The second book I like to refer to as a reference book. This one is called The Enzyme Cure by Lita Lee. And this book starts out with a little bit about the importance of digestion and enzyme therapy and enzyme replacement for what the food uh, industry has taken out of all of the foods to extend shelf life. But more importantly, it goes through 36 different common medical conditions and says, how did somebody get here and how do we get them out of here? And right. it is, again, going to help you learn what's my body telling me when I have this symptom or this symptom? What is that really saying? You know, allergies, look at carb intake, right? Asthma, look at carb intake. Um, it's very enlightening. And it's a great reference. You're not going to read it cover to cover because if you don't know anybody who has prostate problems, you can read it and you're not going to remember it. But the day you hear somebody that you care about does, you'll pull that book out and then it's relevant, right? right. And then for those who are interested, I do have a class coming up. Great. It's a two hour class on diet and digestion and talks about these topics and goes much deeper into it. And we walk away with practical things that people can do to better get in touch with their bodies and give their bodies what they're asking for. And that's Thursday evening, May 9th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Great. And Heidi, where are you located? Do people come to you? Do you do Skype? How does this work? Generally, people come to me, although this work can be done remotely. Local uh -huh. people typically come to me, and I have an office in Nora. Okay, great. Yeah. I didn't realize you're so close. That's great yeah. to know. Okay. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on today. I put your website up um, for anybody listening on the podcast. It's HeidiStraub.com, H-E-I-D-I-S-T-R-A-U-B.com. Thank you again for sharing the information for us. Um, it was eye opening for me, even um, some of the things we talked about. So I'm sure that um, it'll help the audience with some of the things they're going through. So thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you again for having me.